Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start our discussion on circles and ellipses. We'll get started with talking about circles, so let's go ahead and jump right into our definition. So a circle is just a set of all points that are equidistant or of equal distance from a fixed point that we call the center of the circle. And this distance from the center to any point on the circle itself is what we refer to as the radius of the circle. And so then the last thing that is missing from our picture is the radius of our circle, which I've drawn in now in orange. Remember the radius is just the distance from the center of our circle to any point on the circle itself. So next what we're gonna do is work together to go from our geometric description of a circle to an algebraic definition or description of a circle instead. And to help us do that, we're gonna to need to use the distance formula because in our geometric definition here, we are told that the circle is the set of all points that are of an equal distance from that fixed point called the center. And so here I've written the distance formula that we will be using up on our board in pink. And so the distance formula gives us the distance between any two points in our plane. And so if we want to find the straight line distance between any two points in the plane, the distance formula will assist us in doing just that. In order to use the distance formula, we need to know two points and their ordered pairs or coordinates. Let's go ahead and call our first point x1, y1, and our second point x2, y2. Then the distance formula is going to calculate that straight line distance between our two points. And so the way the distance formula is kind of derived or goes about finding this is really by using right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But now instead of calling the hypotenuse C, we're calling the hypotenuse the distance between our two points D. Well, then what is the height of our right triangle here? Well, it's this vertical difference between our two points, Y2 and Y1. So the height of our right triangle is given by y2 minus y1. And similarly, the base of our right triangle here is just given by this horizontal distance, which is the difference between our x coordinates. So that'll be x2 minus x1. And so now if we think about our right triangle here in the Pythagorean theorem, this side length squared, the quantity x2 minus x1 squared, plus this side length squared, the quantity y2 minus y1 squared, has to equal our hypotenuse squared or d squared. That's what we have here in our distance formula equation. We just took the square root of both sides and took the positive solution because distance is always gonna be a positive number. And so the distance formula is an important part of deriving the equation of a circle, right? I use the same color here intentionally. So now let's go ahead and apply our distance formula to this geometric definition of our circle. And so the geometric definition of a circle says that the distance from the center of our circle to any point on our circle is gonna give us this fixed distance that we call the radius. So our distance D, we can replace with our radius value. Let's go ahead and call it R for the general circle. And it's gonna be equal to the distance between any point on our circle and the center of our circle. So what is the point on our circle? And what is the center of our circle? For our general formula, we're gonna let a point on our circle be described by just a general X and Y coordinate and the center of our circle is gonna be described by this fixed x and y coordinate where x is equal to h and y is equal to k. So we can think of x comma y as our x2, y2 point and h comma k as our x1, y1 point. And now we're gonna plug all that into our distance formula that gives us our radius is equal to the square root of x minus h squared, right, that's our x2 minus x1 squared, just using our values of x for x2 and h for x1. Then we have to add to that the difference between our y coordinates squared, that'll be y minus k, that quantity in parentheses squared. And so this equation does describe our circle, but the more common way to write it is by squaring both sides and maybe moving things around a little bit. You'll often see this as the quantity x minus h squared plus the quantity y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And this general formula is often referred to as the standard form or the standard equation for a circle. And so this is always going to give us or help us describe the circle of radius r centered at the point hk. So if we know our center point, 
and the radius, we can plug h, k, and r into this general form and quickly generate the equation of our circle. Or if we're looking at a picture of a circle, we can go ahead and look at the center point to find h and k, and then just use the center point and any other point on the circle to find the radius, plug that in, and we can again find the equation for our circle. Another observation that I think is helpful to make at this point is if the center of our circle is at the origin 0, 0, notice that our equation would simplify where we just plug in h and k equals 0 to get x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So by shifting our circle uh, up, down, left, or right, we're just using the same concepts for transformations that we did for transformations of functions earlier. And so replacing x with a quantity like x minus h is going to shift us horizontally h units. Replacing y with the quantity y minus k is going to shift us vertically k units. And up or down depending on if k is positive or negative, and left or right depending on whether h is positive or negative as well. I wanted to mention that now because we're going to see that also come into play when we talk about some of our other uh, shapes coming up, these shapes that are part of the family of conic sections. In this example, we are asked to find the equation of the circle of radius 3 that is centered at the point with coordinates x equals 3 and y equals 4. And then after we find the equation of our circle, we are also asked to graph our circle. And so to get this process started, let's go ahead and remember that general form or standard form for the equation of a circle. And that's that we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to our radius r squared. And so we have to remember what these uh, values of h, k, and r represent for our circle. h and k help us construct the center point of our circle, and here we are told that the center is at the point 3, 4. So right away we know that h is going to be set equal to 3, and k is going to be set equal to 4, and our radius r we're also told is 3, so just putting all that together, we can very, very quickly construct the equation for this circle. It's going to look like the quantity x minus 3 squared. That's our x minus h value squared. We have to add to that y minus 4 squared. That's our y minus k squared quantity in our definition of a circle. And then the right-hand side of our equation is going to be our radius value squared. That's 3 squared or 9. All right, and so to finish this question off, we are also asked to graph the circle, and we could have graphed the circle without knowing its equation, just with the information that was given. And so to start off by graphing our circle, we're going to start with the center point. That is the point 3, 4. So right 3 and up 4 from the origin will give us our center point. And so we're drawing the center point in here, but an important thing to remember is the center of the circle is not actually part of the circle, right? We can't... Um, plug the center point into the equation and get a true statement out of it. The center point is not on the circle. It's just that point that helps us actually draw the circle and describe it. And so now the circle is going to be composed of all the infinitely many points that are of a distance of 3 or the radius value from the center of our circle. And the best way to go about sketching a circle by hand is first kind of plotting that center point and then using that radius value to find some uh, points on your circle. I always use the points that are directly above, below, to the left, and to the right of the center point. Those four points together should be enough to help us sketch our circle. All right, so if I'm at my center point and I go down vertically three units, I'll be a distance of three from the center, so that'll give me a point on the circle. Let's go ahead and actually make that point in orange so we can have some distinction between our center and the circle itself. So then I need a point that is three units to the left of our circle, or the center of our circle, I should say. That'll give us the y-intercept, the point zero, 04. If I go three units to the right, I'll end up at the point six, 04. That'll give me like the far right point on the edge of my circle. And then if I go up vertically three units from the center, that'll give us the point at the very top of our circle. And so now I did all this by hand, so this is going to be a very rough sketch. It probably won't look much like a circle at all. It'll probably look more like an ellipse, which we'll talk about next, but we're just trying to do our best job here. So now we're going to try to connect our dots with a circle. That was pretty bad over here, but the idea gets across, I think. This is what our circle is roughly going to look like.